What's up guys, it's Eric from Rear Candy and welcome back to another Celestial Storm entry into our testing ground series where we take a look at some upcoming uh, you know, new archetypes and new cards that set gives us and we try them out to see what might have some potential for competitive play. So in this entry, I'm going to be over there on the left, I'm going to be playing the very hype new Rayquaza GX deck. And over there on the right, we have Corey Miesmer, who is a local player from my area. He was nice enough to help me out with this video. But he's going to be playing the new Swampert. So two cards that have had, I think, uh, a little bit of attention on them in this new set. So we'll have to see how this one is going to go. Both decks are actually kind of similar in some ways, too. You know, this Rayquaza GX deck is based around flooding your board with energy to do more uh you know more damage and then Corey's deck is aimed at stacking a bunch of energy on the swamper to do lots of damage so uh you know a few parallels between both these decks here so we'll have to see how this one is going to go here so i am going to get to go first it looks like and i have kind of an awkward first turn here uh rayquaza gx for you guys who might not be familiar has this ability whenever you bench it from your hand you get to discard the top three cards of your deck and then attach a basic energy that's in your discard pile to rayquaza gx but i'm in just kind of a weird spot because i have a ton of energy in my opening hand and i have a rayquaza gx so i'm thinking if i choose to activate the ability and mill the top three cards of my deck my odds of actually hitting an energy might be a little bit low so this is one thing i really don't like about this hand that i have but at the same time i kind of want to you know bench it and start being able to pile energy on it so it's a little bit risky i could hit an energy or i could just mill three important cards uh, so you can hear i'm a little bit torn and here i'm just showing Corey like my options are a little weird here so I think I still bench the Rayquaza no matter what, no matter if I activate the ability or not, but here I'm going to go for it. And unfortunately I mill three cards I would have preferred just to keep in my deck, so... Okay, and but I am going to play this Max Wixer, and if nothing else, milling those top three cards did get me closer to hitting an energy off of a Max Wixer, so that's not like the worst thing in the world. But here I'm going to get down, uh, you know, an energy from hand as well, and just play this Cynthia and refresh my hand. So if you guys might not be familiar with Rayquaza GX attacks, uh, it's first one for a Grass Lightning Colorist, is 30 times the amount of basic Grass and Lightning energy you have in play, and then it's GX move for a single Grass energy, you discard your hand and draw 10 cards. So very, very powerful, uh, you know, uh, support GX move there. And here I'm gonna get down this Parallel City, and I think I have another Rayquaza GX in hand. So here I'm going to bench a Tapu Lele first, and I think I'm going to go for a Guzma, just in anticipation of Corey getting some of their basics down. So I'm going to do this before benching the Rayquaza, just to increase my odds of, you know, not milling that Guzma or something. So here I am going to mill some more cards off the top of my deck. I'm going to attach that Grass Energy that's there to that Rayquaza. And one thing that's important to note is that the card out of the top three cards, those don't have to be an energy. You can you can attach any energy that's already in your discard pile as well. So just something I want to clarify real quick. And then Corey over on his turn, looks like he's opening with a raw bridge. That's definitely got to be a good feeling. So start getting some mud kips into play and you know, hopefully start being able to get some of these evolutions into play as quick as possible. So I have to see what else he is going to this turn. He does have a water energy and it looks like he's opting to attach it to the Mudkip. Not sure how much I like it just because he saw me go for a Guzma last turn. So here I'm going to bring up this Mudkip. But at the same time, you can't really, you don't want to whiff an energy attachment either. So it's kind of like a, like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place there. But here's going to promote this Slugma and it's going to go for an Ultra Ball. It appears it's going to get rid of a Bridget and a Guzmo. Okay, so we'll have to see what he's going to get here. Maybe a Marsh Stomp or even another Mudkip could be a good option as well. So let's see what he has. It looks like he might be eyeing himself down a Mag Cargo. He does also have Alolan Vulpix in there. That's actually a card I would have considered going for. So, okay, had I known he had Alolan Vulpix in the deck, I think what I would have done here is actually promote Mudkip and then get the Alolan Vulpix and then hopefully be able to retreat into it. Uh, because right now this Mag Cargo has a good ability, but it's stuck in the active spot, has a really pesky retreat cost. I don't know if Corey's actually going to have access uh, to being able to use uh, Alolan Vulpix this turn or not. But anyways, so Mag Cargo, that's another new card that we're getting in Celestial Storm. If you guys aren't too familiar with it, it's kind of cool. It has this ability, Smooth Over. You get to search your deck for a card, put it on top of your deck. 
So very nice with this Swampert. So Swampert also has a great ability, very similar to the trade that Zorark GX has. You discard a card from your hand and draw three cards. So it looks like Corey is going to go for a smooth over here. So I'll have to see what else he is going to get for turn. Um, I wasn't paying too much attention to what he currently has in hand. If I'm in his spot, I might consider going for a Marsh Top. I think that could be a decent idea here. Well, right now, just in general, he has kind of a weird situation on his hands. He doesn't really want to leave this mech cargo in the active spot because it helps him draw exactly what he needs every turn. But at the same time, I don't think it's a good idea actually attacking with this Swampert either. So we'll have to see what he's going to go for. It looks like he's opting for a float stone. What he really needs here is if, if he can get himself an aqua patch, that would be gigantic. If he can get float stone and then maybe out of the other two cards that he's gonna draw get an aqua patch, that'd be amazing because this Swampert will be able to hit for exactly 190. And that is going to take a knockout on this Rayquaza GX, which only has 180 uh, HP. And here, unfortunately, he does whiff the the aqua patch here so here he's just going to play the field blower get himself down a float stone and it looks like he's going to retreat but honestly guys i really don't like this play because he's only going to be doing 170 damage and that's not enough to knock out a rayquaza and the swamper is just going to be return ko'd on the following turn and that's his source of draw power it's going to be gone he's not going to have another swampert ready to go for next turn and here I have a Fighting Fear Belt. And this is another situation where I think, I think Corey should play just a little bit defensively, just sacrifice, you know, something maybe like, I don't know, even the other Mudkip, or even I think probably just the Mag Cargo would have been fine here uh, to get rid of. And then next turn, he could have actually safely taken a knockout. But now he's just in kind of a tricky spot at this point. I have this Fighting Fury Belt down. Here, I'm going to get down a Latias Prism Star as well. This could be a decent card in this matchup too. If Corey is able to take a return KO on his next turn here. So Latias Prism Star, if you guys are unfamiliar with it, for a single card with energy is 30 damage. You attach a basic energy from discard pile to each of your basic Dragon Pokemon. So it's a nice Pokemon to pivot to maybe mid-game. If Corey does take a knockout and I'm unable to do enough damage to return KO a Swampert. So here it looks like Corey's just going to go for a Cynthia. So he needs a lot here. He needs, you know, Rare Candy, Swampert, uh, Counter Energy, Aqua Patch. He needs a lot of stuff here. But if he is able to get the Rare Candy Swampert, that alone would be, uh, you know, hopefully enough to maybe carry him into the other combo pieces since he can draw some more cards afterwards. And he got the Rare Candy, but no Swampert and no way to draw cards. But he does have this Alolan Vulpix. Now, the only downside right now is he only has one Mudkip in play, which means if I'm able to successfully goose with this Mudkip, he's not going to have any more attackers in play. And it's going to take him a few turns to get set back up, because I think he's already gone through two Mudkips right now, and if this one goes down, that will be a third. So we'll have to see how this is going to play out for him. I'd imagine we're going to see a Swampert, but beyond that, I'm not sure. I saw Marsh Stomp in his deck. If he has another Mudkip, I think he definitely goes for that, but it looks like he's eyeing down the Marsh Stomp and the Swampert, so he must be out of Mudkips at this point, so he really needs to get his Rescue Stretcher and start getting some of those back, you know, back in play, that way he can start evolving again. And unfortunately for Corey, I already have the Guzma in hand, I see it right now, so I'm just going to Guzma up this Mudkip, and I have a Fighting Fury Belt, I should probably, I mean... I guess I can get down. I'm really not in any danger of being knocked out, but nevertheless, in case of an N or something like that, it's definitely a good card uh, to get down, just to thin out of my deck. So at this point, guys, you know, even though I still have half my prize to take, I have to say, I think that's game over. It's going to be at least two turns before Corey can get an evolution into play, and by that point, I'm going to be down to just a single prize. So I have to see what he's going to do. He's going to ultra all away this Marsh Stomp and this Water Energy. Looking for a Tapu Lele, it appears. Probably going for an N if I just had to guess. Okay. So I'm only going to get three, while Corey is going to get a fresh hand of six here. 
but he has to hit rescue stretcher like and this is honestly the type of thing where like if i don't hit rescue stretcher i'm thinking i scoop and go to the next game uh you know this is just a game for fun though just to clarify guys this isn't a major term or anything so Corey will probably just play it out either way, but I'd, this is the point in the game where if this was a major tournament, I would probably just scoop and go on to the next game here. And he does, he just doesn't have that much to work with. I see a counter energy, but um, you know, no mudkips or you know, no rescue stretcher, anything like that. And I see the rescue stretcher in the deck. He just has to get it. That's the problem. And unfortunately, you guys, like I said, I think it's just too late at this point. I just don't think he has a chance. Okay, so he's not actually going for a beacon. He is going for a smooth over with his mag cargo. So that's fine as well. I don't think Corey had a draw supporter in hand, so he can actually double puzzle next turn and go for a mudkip and an end, most likely. So here I'm going to play a max elixir is going to fail but honestly i'm not too worried about it i have enough energy in play i can pretty much knock out whatever i want and i'm really not in any danger of being knocked out right now either so let's see just gonna go ahead and play an end here so even though i'm only getting it three cards i am going to disrupt Corey in the process since he did stick that puzzle of time on top of his deck now his deck is going to be shuffled up again and he's going to get a different uh, set of cards And like I said, I think I'm just so far ahead, even though I'm only getting three prizes, or uh, only getting three cards off of this end, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. And here I get a Cynthia, and I also have a Sycamore in hand, so I'm in, I think, a fine spot. So unfortunately, Core just does not have that much. He's got to throw down a counter energy on this Lele, but um, there's not much else he can do. He can sacrifice this mad cargo, but then Lele just gets knocked out the following turn, so... Yeah, we're just going to scoop it up and go on to a game two. So unfortunately, things just did not go Corey's way. I do think he made a couple misplays. I think he got just a little uh, too excited being able to attack with the Swamper. But to be fair, guys, in these testing rounds videos, a lot of times these are maybe our first, second, or even third times that we're playing with the decks. And especially in the case of Corey, he was nice enough to just come out and help me record these. He doesn't have as much testing with these at this point that I had. So some misplays are expected to happen. So don't be too hard on them in the comments section, hopefully. Um, but yeah, and also too, just I want to give a quick little plug if you guys are interested in either of these decks over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. I have some articles detailing some of my early uh, impressions testing with Rayquaza GX, and then I actually have an entire article dedicated to just Swamper as well. So if you guys are looking for these, I will have a link to our Patreon below in the description if you want to learn about how to access that content. But here we're just getting ready for this second game. And here on my side, I feel pretty good about, you know, how I'm approaching the matchup. This Rayquaza deck is a pretty linear deck anyways. Uh, you just pile a bunch of energy onto your field and start swinging. There's not a whole lot of nuance to it in that regard. Uh, whereas Corey, I do think there are some options in terms of, in terms of how he wants to approach this. I think the big thing with this deck is it kind of plays a little bit similarly to a hybrid of Greninja and Gardevoir. So the engine of the deck, as far as getting set up, very similar to Gardevoir, we have a little in Vulpix, we have, you know, the double copy of Bridget and things like that. But it's kind of like Greninja in the sense that you kind of just sacrifice Pokemon in the first several turns and the deck really just takes off by once your opponent gets down to around maybe their second or third prize. So I think that's how Corey needs to approach this. Like I said, he, I think, got just a little bit too eager in that last game and started attacking even though it wasn't going to set up any knockouts for him. So he just needs to take his time, build up his board, get some Swamperts into play, and then he'll be able to, I think, be a lot more successful in this next game. So here he has an Alolan Vulpix. And even though he didn't get the Torn Bridget, he has two Mudkips in play, and that's really what's probably most important here. So here, over on my turn, though, I'm going to Ultra Ball away these Lightning Energies since we do need energy in the discard pile for Rayquaza to get them out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Rayquaza GX and just take a peek through my deck and see what all I'm going to have access to. I think I see our Lantern Evolution line. Hasn't been too big yet in this series, but I think I see that in there. I think we have Latias Prism Star as well. So those are some of the key kind of like one ofs that I'm going to be searching for here just to make sure we have in there. Also, Fighting Fury Belt counts and Parallel City are going to be pretty big here as well to deny knockouts. So here I'm in the middle of the top three cards of my deck. We have plenty of energy in the discard pile. And here I'm going to get down a Fighting Fury Belt. 
And I think I have a Sycamore. Yeah, we're just going to Sycamore that hand and get a fresh hand of seven here. And here I have another Rayquaza GX, but I have an Ultra Ball. And I do remember thinking, should I play it? And here I kind of wish I would have. Um, just because I was thinking, you know what, I really don't want to mill this Latias Prism Star, but I was thinking, you know what, it's only three cards. Latias is only one card in the whole deck. Where are the odds that I hit it? And I did. So, kind of regretting not playing the Ultra Ball now. But, anyways, uh, so here I'm just going to get down a little bit more energy and just a pass over to Corey. So, not the most explosive turn there. And. Oh, same for Corey. He does not have much going on. Didn't even play a supporter. So here it looks like he's going to go for a Swampert and a Mudkip. I like that. Kind of in anticipation of, you know, if I Guzma up one of these Mudkips, he wants to still have a second one into play. So here I'm going to Ultra Ball, getting out another Rayquaza GX. And this is a turn where I really wish I had Guzma or had access to it, but I don't have another energy to actually take a knockout. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to just... Uh, you know, play a supporter and try to get a float stone. So here I'm going to play N, putting back that Swamper and that Mudkip right back into Corey's deck. Try to disrupt him a little bit. Like I said, even though I do kind of need the float stone to really start putting on pressure, I do want to disrupt Corey in the process if possible. And no float stone that turn either. So definitely a little bit of a slow start for this Rayquaza deck, but I'm starting to, to amass a good bit of energy at this point. So, you know, I think I can kind of take my time and just fill my board with energy. Corey's deck is pretty slow, so he's not putting on a ton of pressure just yet anyway, so. All right, so I do see a Swampert in Corey's hand. Does he have rare candy? But no, he must not. He just has the end, and that's fine. He does have another Mudkip. That's definitely a card he wants to get down. And so... Yeah, so even though things are going a little bit slow, he doesn't have that Swamper, I think he's still setting up pretty decently. Uh, like I said, the Swamper deck is usually going to go down on about two, maybe even three prizes before it really starts to explode. So I think it's working just fine for him. Here he has Marsh Stomp, and ooh, I'm actually not a big fan of this. Uh, evolving the Mudkip that has the energy. And the reason for that is because of in case of a Guzma or something, you kind of want to stagger your resources. You don't want too many resources committed to one of these fragile little pre-evolutions. I would have much rather have seen um, uh, that Marsh Tom come down on one of these other Mudkips. That way, in case I have a Guzma, he still has an energy on this Mudkip, putting him closer to being able to pull off a return KO with Swampert. So here, and this is just what I was talking about, I have Guzma ready to go so I can bring up that Marsh Dump, taking away the Marsh Dump and the energy. So it's going to force just yet another card for Corey to have to actually take a return KO on this next turn. So I'm going to get down a Lightning Energy and just going to take a knockout on this Marsh Dump. So I feel pretty good about the spot that I'm in here. So Corey's going to get down a Slugma, it appears and just play an end. So, okay. Things are going a little bit slow for him. He was not able to successfully get that Marsh Stomp to stick, but, um, you know, he still has two of his, you know, attacker evolution line in play. So that's kind of the baseline of what he's going to be shooting for. I think I've already gone through two Guzmas so far. So uh, I think these Pokemon are probably safe statistically. And so Corey's just going to go for a beacon. He does have rare candy in hand, so but it looks like he's grabbing a Mudkip. And then from there, I'd probably grab Swampert, because what he can do is, even though he could go for two Swamperts, I like the idea of going for the Mudkip just in case of, uh, you know, just in case of another Guzma. Even though, like I said, I think he's probably safe. He doesn't want to take any chances here. And here I have a Parallel City. I do not have Guzma, but I do have this Parallel City, and that's actually pretty important. I think both directions facing the card are going to be important, but I actually might choose to face the blue side towards myself here. So the reason for that is the player that has the blue side facing them can only have three bench Pokemon, and even though that is going to limit my own bench size, it, the red side is going to reduce Corey's damage output by 20, which is really big. So if Corey is able to get, for example, the double Aqua Patch, uh, choice band counter energy swampert then that would do 190 damage to me 
And if Corey isn't able to find the Field Blower that turn, on a following turn, he can just Field Blower that Fighting Fury Belt to get a knockout. So I wanted to get down this Parallel City and basically force him to have the Field Blower. And here we're just discussing, um, I'm not sure what, it looks like we were talking about something, but I'm just gonna go for a Cynthia, apparently. So yeah, if he is able to Field Blower, that would be bad, but uh, like I said, I just want to absolutely force him to have just another piece of the combo needed to get a return KO here. And this is situation two, where that extra energy that was in play on that Swamper, or I'm sorry, on that Marshomp, if that had still been in play, that may could have made it potentially a little bit easier for him to pull off this whole combo I'm discussing here. So you're just going to knock out this Alluin Vulpix, and here's my turn to capitalize. I think I have to, like I just have to make something happen. Or Corey has to right here. He needs to have the rear candy, uh, the Swamper. He does have that. He has two Aqua Patches. I'm not sure how many water energy he has in the discard pile, but if he has two, that's going to be a good start. So he is going to go for the double Aqua Patch. Okay, that's definitely good. But he still needs a lot of other cards here. And he's going to, looks like he's going to power draw, to draw three cards. And he probably needs a Lele, that's what he's looking for here. And he's going to Ultra Wall away in Aqua Patch and Puzzle of Time. It's definitely not two cards you normally want to get rid of, but he needs a draw supporter because he still needs some other pieces of this combo. Like I said, he needs the counter energy. He needs the, the choice ban, and he needs the field blower. It could still happen. Um, if he does draw another Swamper, that could also be good because he can evolve that other Marsh Stomp that's been in play and draw some more cards that way. And he has not used Smooth Over as well either. So like I said, if he can get the, the other uh, Swamper, I think that alone is going to help him out a lot here. That can probably get him to where he needs to go. And unfortunately, he did not get it. Oh man, that is a huge missed opportunity. Had he gotten another Swamper, that could have potentially gotten him to that extra, you know, those extra three cards could have gotten him at least one of the combo pieces he needed, like for sure. So here it looks like he's just going to go for a smooth over, grabbing a counter energy for next turn. So actually, you know what, if I'm... If I'm Corey, I think I might have even preferred a Swampert potentially. I think I would have liked that instead. And actually, I think I, think I may have even sacrificed Happy Lele, as weird as that is. He's going to need as many Swampert as he can possibly get here. But anyways, on my turn, let's see what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to keep piling on, piling on plenty of energy. Uh, to these Rayquazas, and I'm going to go for a Cynthia. So unfortunately, I did not have a Guzma to take a knockout on this Swampert, so I really need to set up my board and get more energy and play in anticipation of the Swampert taking a knockout next turn. So let's see what I'm going to do here. Let's see, I see a Max Elixir, I see a Chinchow, Okay, we're going to see a Max Elixir, and it does hit a Lightning Energy, okay. So we'll get that down on that other way. Cause so right now I'm hitting for, what is that, 30, 60, 90, 20, 50, 80, to 10. Okay, yeah, we're hitting for a ton of damage. <laughs> so even if this Rayquaza does go down, I have to say I think we're going to be in a good spot. Okay, so Corey does have the Counter Energy. So counter energy for you guys who might not be too familiar with it, uh, whenever you're behind on prizes, it provides two energy of any type on non-Pokemon non GX and EX. So let's see, uh, looks like Corey is going for a smooth over here. Okay, he's going to put that field blower on top of his deck. He's going to discard that rare candy, draw some more cards. Okay, so he's going to field blower away the Fighting Fury Belt and the Parallel City. Let's see, it looks like he's trying to attach that water, but he already attached the counter energy this turn. So here he's just gonna go for a Cynthia. 
I'm not sure if he had the Cynthia in hand prior to the power draw, but if he did, I think I would have preferred seeing the Cynthia uh, happen first and then the power draw afterwards, uh, just because he's now having to shuffle some of those cards he just drew back into his deck. But luckily he does draw another Swampert, that's going to be really nice as well. And so he is going to have access to another power draw. So maybe discarding that water energy could be good. And it looks like he's debating, but yeah, I think that might have been a misplay from Corey. I think he definitely should have discarded something to draw a few more cards, maybe to get down, you know, another Aqua Patch or something like that in anticipation of uh, powering up his next Swampert. But anyways, over on my turn, I'm going to bench this Chinchou. And now that I have a bench spot uh, open up from this Parallel City uh, getting bumped out of play, and I do have another Parallel City actually. So I can just get that one in play. I can turn it. You know, I, I could face it towards Corey, limit his bench size, but I think yet again, I'm going to turn it to where the blue side is facing my direction and forcing Corey to have extra cards in order to uh, successfully take a knockout. So you can tell I'm a little bit torn here, especially since I don't have a Fighting Fury belt. I think that's gonna be the route I wanna go. So let's do that. Then I'm going to retreat into another Rayquaza GX and then just looks like i'm going to sit on this hand i think i have a tapu coco gx in my hand so i don't want to discard it with because i think i had a sigma i don't want to discard that i want to maybe even be able to throw that down next turn if corey is able to successfully knock out this active rayquaza so okay corey does have a field blower that's going to be good getting rid of floatstone and more importantly that parallel city that's going to get him a little bit closer to pulling off this combo. So here he's gonna Ultra Ball. Does he have another Mudkip? That's what he really needs at this point. And I don't see one, otherwise I'm sure that's what he must have uh, wanted to grab. But here he's just gonna go for a Cynthia, that's fine. He really needs to find a Rescue Stretch. I think it's gonna be the card he's gonna need most at this point. In addition to all of the other crazy cards that he needs to pull off this Knockout. So like I said, he needs double Aqua Patch, Counter Energy, and Choice Band. So we have a Puzzle of Time. I mean, that can get him a few of the pieces, but, and here he almost power draws, but he needs to go ahead and use this Smooth Over first, going for a Puzzle of Time. It appears. So let's see what he's gonna grab here. He's gonna discard that Guzma getting three cards. Unfortunately, no other combo pieces there. He's gonna have to just puzzle this turn and then just hope that next turn he can draw into what he needs. So he's gonna go for, it looks like, the choice ban and the counter energy. Or depending on, I'm not sure how many Aqua Patches he's gone through, but depending on how many of those, Aqua Patch could be a consideration. But it looks like he's eyeing down a Puzzle and a Counter Energy. I like that as well. Just because he did have to discard that other Puzzle earlier, so this will allow him to double Puzzle again at some point. And here it looks like he's just going to pass, having to sacrifice this Mac Cargo, but I topped at Guzma, so I can just bring up Tapu Lele GX, and that is going to be the game, guys. So. I do take this best of three series pretty convincingly. I do think Corey had a couple of uh, rough turns there in both games. I think game one, it was more like related to misplays, but game two, he did definitely whip a few things here and there. But nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing these two new decks in action. Like I said, go check us out on Patreon if you want to see the articles that do talk about these archetypes as well. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe and definitely stay tuned to the channel. We're going to have a ton of Celestial Storm coverage over the next several weeks. So definitely stay tuned for what we have coming up. But if you can also support this channel, like I said, by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.